you better than that. He's been better to you than you've been to yourself. And you can do better than that. Glory to your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we just praise him for everything that he has done and everything that he's doing in this hour. We must learn how to appreciate God. We magnify him because God is good and, and first of all, because he's just God. We're not going to prolong the time this morning, but we are grateful for each and every one that's present. And I sincerely hope and pray that you came to hear the word of God, because if you didn't, you're in the wrong place. Amen. As you entered in, you may have saw the sign that said, Welcome to Truth. And that's not false advertisement. Amen. You know, you see a sign, I don't call the church name, it's a place where Jesus, where God dwells. You know, they lie. They're smoking before they go in the church. So we know God is not there. I was looking fun already. Now. <laughs> I'm just stating the fact that, you know, people are looking for the parking lot that have the most cars. But that's not saying that what you need is inside there. You all can be seated. I ain't mindful of a of little eatery in the city of Dallas and it's it's called Vern's Place. It looked like a little hole in the wall. You know, it doesn't have all the neon signs and neon lights and all of this stuff. doesn't have all the the big advertisement doesn't have a great big page in the yellow page. It's just word of mouth advertising. So we get to this little small place. And people just lined up trying to get in. Businessmen in their suits with those the coat over the shoulder. They're just waiting to get in. Because it's not about. The size of the building is what's on the inside. They were more concerned about the quality of the food that was on the inside. And so that's when we were able to get inside, we were treated to the most delightful and delicious meal. Soul food, I must say. It wasn't French fries and hamburgers and, you know, pizza, that's, that kind of stuff. You, I'm talking about soul foods. That stick to your real. And see, that's why you, you go to churches and ain't no soul food. There's nothing that's going to stick to your real. There's nothing that's going to stay with you once you get away from that. You know, you, you, you know you have dined well. When you have eaten today and tomorrow, you still don't want nothing to eat. I've done well. Because of that what was set before me. Now, that being said, when I go to the house of God, I don't want no flamboyant preacher. I don't want no playboy preacher. I don't want an entertainment preacher. I want a man to God. I want someone that's going to get up and expound unto me the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. He, ha he did not have to go to any of the theological seminaries around here, schools of divinities, because none of Jesus' disciples attended none. But the thing about it is, one thing that couldn't be denied, and the Bible said they perceived that Peter and the other was ignorant and unlearned men. 
They didn't have degrees and may not been highly educated. But the Bible said there was one distinct factor that they could not deny, that they had been with the Lord. That's my concern. I want to make sure that those that I'm sitting on the door that I'm listening to have been with the Lord. Not because they got degrees all on the wall. I need somebody that know Jesus for themselves. You know, I was reading a preacher's testimony. He had invited a preacher to come and conduct a revival at his church. For whatever reason, the preacher could not come. So that was an old retired preacher. So what he did is got him to come because the other guy couldn't make it. So he stood in his, in his stead. When he got there, the old man preached. The old man preached. He got the, the young preacher was mad. But he said, you know, one thing it did, it helped him to see himself. He said, I done been to all of the, the, the schools. I got all of the, the degrees. He said, but they never taught me the word of God. He said, I went through this and, man, he said, even after I finished that in, in, in my uh, uh, organization, I went up through the ranks real quick. But I never knew what salvation was. I never had a relationship with Jesus Christ. He said, I understood philosophy. I understood mysticism. I understood ideology. But I didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what's important. It doesn't matter how eloquent they can speak. How eloquent do you need to speak to tell people to accept you repent? You're going to like wise parents. You, you don't need a, a big vocabulary because I want to say it like Jesus said. Jesus kept it simple. And so that people could get an understanding of what God's word said. So we praise God for the truth. Now, I want to call your attention to the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter. And if you brought your Bible, you did right because we use the Bible here. We, we don't use all that other foolishness. We use the Bible. I want to call your attention to the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Very simple verse in verse 8. Jesus Christ. The same yesterday and today and tomorrow. Jesus Christ. He's the same today. Yeah, he's saying yesterday, today, he's going to be the same tomorrow. Past, present, and future. So I don't care the churches would have you to believe in this day and time. That God is doing a new thing. No, no, no. God cannot do a new thing. Because God wrote the book. The end. Turn the beginning. He wrote the beginning from the end. He started at the back of the book and, and he began to write from the end to the beginning. So I won't have to go back and, and, and you know, say that it's subject to be appended to. Subject to be revised. No, no, no. God's word is forever settled in the heaven. So everything that God has written from the beginning of time is not going to change. You, they, they want to tell you that we're living in a new day now. No, no, no. You don't understand. God controls time. You might say it's a new day, but God said, this is my time. And it, it, I don't care if it's another million years, God's truth is going to stand firm. It's not going to change. And I don't care what the people are saying. It's what the Bible said. Whether you know it or not, 
This is our GPS. This is God's positioning system. If you want to go to heaven, this is what it's going to take to position you. This is what it's going to take to get you prepared for heaven. Going to church does not save anybody. Only having a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, I'm going to say this again. And when God spoke to me sometime back and said, the problem with the churches today is inadequate preachers. The preachers, the people in the pulpit, the people in leadership, the people today in this day and time, they call themselves pastors and preachers and whatever else. They don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so you're putting all of these uncircumcised people up trying to tell somebody about a God that they don't even know. And so now, you know, the, the, the disciples that were with Jesus say, we speak that we know. And we testify that, that we see. So we're we not going about what somebody else said. We got a relationship with Jesus Christ. We ate with him. We slept with him. We, we, we traveled with him. We beheld him as the only begotten son of God. So, so we're living in a day and time that people don't know who Jesus is. You know, He's not that one that they hung on the cross that the people talking about Easter. The Bible said in that he died, he died once. They kill him every year. They hang him on the cross every year. So Easter is a lie just like Christmas too. I, I'm just going to go ahead and tell it. That, and, and if you've been lying to your children about Santa Claus, they're going to know you're a liar too. You know, you you got to be mentally deranged to tell your child that somebody else bought you the gift when you done went out and worked hard. If God said, I won't give my glory to another, I ain't going to give my glory to some big, fat, jolly, ho, 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 I ain't going to tell that lie. I'm going to tell it like it is. Mom bought it. Dad bought it. Come on, talk to me. I ain't on that. They don't go there and tell. I ain't Flora, I ain't whoever. And say, Santa Claus brought me a bike. No, that's a lie. Mom and dad brought me a bike. So we need to stop the lies. Should you bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of God? The counsel and education of God. And y'all stay with me here. The reason it's important that you tell your children the truth. Because if you tell them about Santa Claus and then they come and hear me. And I'm telling you Santa Claus is a lie. And they're going to look at you and say, Mommy, he said Santa Claus is a lie. You're going to be, listen to the priest. <laughs> they want to know, is the preacher telling the truth or you lying? And the danger of it is when you don't tell your children the truth, when they come and hear truth, then they're going to think you're lying to them about some other thing. So you want to make sure that you, you're you training them up in the way that they should go. You don't train them up to believe lies. You tell them the truth. You want them to respect you. You want them to give honor to you and appreciate what mom and dad does for them. So now... <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And this is one of the greatest things that I appreciate about God and about his son, Jesus Christ. Their immutability, they don't change. People change. But God doesn't change. You know, You got people that said time changed. Time never changed. Time never changed. Oh, yeah, time changed. No, time ain't never changed. You still got 24 hours in a day. Time never changed. People changed. So God never changed. God didn't go from one age to the next. It was what people come up with, and they kept going from one thing to another. Can, can I just teach? Now, the Bible tells us about men. 
that decided that they want to go to heaven. But they didn't want to do it God's way, so they're going to build a tower to heaven. And so now God get word that what man is intending on doing, so God decides to, hey, we got to go down and visit man. Because man has become one, there's nothing that can stop them that they put their mind to. So God come down, man building a tower on the way to heaven. So God said, what we'll do is just confound the language. So if you had two working together and he caused this one to start speaking Cantonese and this one Japanese, then we can't communicate. So now he confounded the language so they couldn't communicate with each other. So they just split. They left so they started. They couldn't build a wall because of a language barrier. And they call it the Tower of Babel, which is the Tower of Confusion. And so man always wanted to come up with a different way. But it wasn't God that said, I want y'all to do it. Man decided we're going to do this. So it wasn't God that changed. It wasn't time that changed. It was man that changed. They're always coming up with something wicked, coming up with some other device, inventor of things to their own hurt. But I just thank God that God never changes. When you got a God and you serve a God like this, then you don't have to keep changing. You know, watch this here. When you look at clothing, you know, they, they, that was time they could say that's out of style. Nothing goes out of style now. All you got to do is just keep it for a, a month or a few, or a year or two, and hey, it's back in style. So there's nothing that ever, really ever goes out of style now. So, but God is consistent. He's always God. His standards are always the same. And Jesus said unto his 12, what I say unto one, I say unto all. And so over at our church, we don't do that. I don't care what you're going to do at your church. What you're saying, we don't do what the Bible said at our church. Because whatever God's word says here, this is what thou ought to be preaching and teaching over there. If they are the church that Christ established. The church that God established was one that sinned, that the gates of hell was not going to prevail against it. Now in churches today, the sin is running rapid. And now that people are flocking to churches where we can do what we want to do. But let me tell you something. All of those people that want to do what you want to do, you know Solomon told the people, say, hey, you go ahead on, do whatever you want to do. Go on and live like you want to live. But I want to tell you this. For every work, God going to bring it into judgment. Everything that you're doing, God going to bring it into judgment. And so that's what you got to realize. Men, men, women, boys, and girls are doing what they want to do. And one thing they fail to realize, according to Hebrew 9, 27, it is appointed unto man wants to die. But after this come the judgment. You know, dying wouldn't be bad if we just go back to the dust. And that'd be it. No, 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 no. After death comes the judgment. So every one of us, we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And we all must give an account of every deed done in our mortal body, whether it's good or whether it's evil. And so I want to make sure that the life that I live down here, my God, is acceptable with God. I don't want to, I'm not depending on what the preacher said. Because if the, if the preacher is not preaching the word of God, if the preacher is not preaching his Bible like line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, I don't want, I don't want to have no part with. We going people going to church now. You don't even need a Bible because now church has become a place of entertainment. We we got pep squads and drill teams and everything else in the church. They got the little naked women coming up there. You know, you're talking about praise dancers. You, 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 you can't praise God with all of your hand out. Don't care if y'all don't ever look like they got on night clothes. 
that, 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 that's nasty, nasty, nasty. That has nothing to do with God. Because praise, one thing about praise, it's not choreographed. It's spontaneous. You know, David didn't choreograph his praise when every six step, when he walked before the Ark of the Covenant, he broke out in a prayer. He, he, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't with the temptation. Not that all of this foolishness. And, and folk think that that God is there. You, did you see how them folk were moving? Did you see how the temptation would move? And so we need to understand, God does not need the world to promote him. God promote himself all by himself. And he need his people, those that are serving him, those that love him with all of their hearts, with all of their mind, with all of their soul, and with all of their strength. He told us to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good work and glorify our Father which is in heaven. They got to see what God has done in our life. They got to see where God done brought us from. Because <laughs> people don't know anything about the power of God. Don't know anything about the power of God. Because see, when God anoints your life with power, he's giving you power over all the power of the enemy. He's giving you power over sin. He's giving you power over the can't help us. Come on, talk back to me. Now, God, he gives you power. Oh, oh, I, you know, I, 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 if I could help, I wish I could help the drink. I can't, no, no, I can't help but to do it. God will give you the power over the can't help. And folks, you know, you know what vexed me more than anything? I'd rather for him to ask me for a million dollars than ask me, you got a cigarette? You bomb you. And I tell him, I said, if I couldn't afford to have it, I wouldn't even smoke. You got that time. You got two cigarettes, two. I said, no, I don't smoke. And if I tell you what, I wouldn't even have a habit that I couldn't support. And they, they look a little funny. They, they turn and walk away then. But you know that that's sickening. I only want to do it bomb up on a habit. But see, God can deliver you from that. God can deliver you from that. But let's, let's talk a little bit about Jesus Christ. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The first time Jesus Christ came on the scene as being Jesus, he came to be the Savior. According to Matthew 1, 21, his name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people or deliver his people from their sin. Jesus Christ is not delivering folks in sin. He's delivering people from sin. And the reason he's saying he can deliver from sin because he got the power to keep you from sin. Come on and talk to me. Because people don't think that you can live free and separated from sin. But Jesus Christ, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. My God has said when the enemy come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. And so you can have power over sin. You got preachers with all these degrees and all these titles and telling you, my God, you sin, I sin, everybody sin. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you something. The next time you hear one, say you sin, I sin. Everybody saying, get up and get out of there. Because that's not the man of God. That's not somebody that you want to hear to. He's lying. He's telling a lie. The Bible said, according to Jude 24, now unto him that's able to keep you from falling. He'll keep you from sin. He'll keep you from lying. He'll keep you from fornicate. He'll keep you from drugs. Come on, talk to me. <laughs> I don't want nobody, you can get mad at me because I'm going to talk about sin. And you got to understand something. I didn't come from heaven. I'm saved. I'm delivered from sin. And so there are some things that God delivered me from. You know, I used to pop my pill. God delivered me from that. I drunk my wine. I ran women. But God saved me from that. Come on, talk to me. And so if God delivered me, he can deliver you. And anybody that say, my God, you got a testimony of where God has brought you from. Come on and talk to me up and heal somebody. You ought to be glad to be saved. <laughs> Something awesome about my testimony that one day I was on my way to hell, but I got saved. 
I was on my way to hell, but I got saved before I got there. Come on, talk to me. And see, some of you today that you don't have Christ in your life, you're on your way to hell, but you can get saved before you get there. And so that's why I said, I won't have nothing to do with hell because I got it right just in time. And that's why I praise God for Jesus Christ. And people just want to acknowledge him on Easter and on, on so-called Christmas and some of his birthday. That's not his birthday. It, it might be somebody else, but it's not his. Care if y'all don't ever like the Bible to say December 25th was his birthday, so on this day, born you in the city of David, a savior. He didn't say this. on December 25th, was born you are unto you in Jerusalem, a savior. No, 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 no. So, this is why we need to go back to the Bible and stop all of this fooling. I know what Mama Nim taught us. So a lot of things that we, we, we were taught were wrong. And so this is why the Bible tells us to search the scripture. According to St. John 5, 39, search the scripture for in them you think you have eternal life. For because they are they that testify of me. I need to go through the word of God and find out what the Bible has to say about who Jesus really is. And because I cannot get to know him if I don't know who he is. And so I can't live for him. I cannot serve him because I don't know who he is. And this is why it's the responsibility of the parents to take the time when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, that God to teach and to instruct your children about the word of God. Tell them about who Jesus really is. <laughs> so I don't have to talk about everything that God delivered me from. Because you don't need to talk about everything that God then delivered you from. Because the Bible, you know, something that we've done, it, the Bible says it's a shame to speak of. Of the thing that was done in darkness. Something that we did in sin, we're trying to put that, we're trying to forget it. But you still got some friends that hadn't forgot what you did. And they still want to bring that, that mess up. But Jesus Christ can save you, and he can save you to the uttermost. Because he the one that brought me out of darkness. He the one that delivered me from my sin. And then the same Jesus that, that delivered me, he can deliver you also. Because he's still the same today. He still got the power, my God, to break every yoke, to destroy every yoke in your life. He can lift every burden in your life. But you got to have a mind to surrender your life unto him. And let me tell you something there's no no greater joy no greater fulfillment to have a marriage that got Jesus at the head of the of the marriage because <laughs> if you got married because man she had a lot of junk in her trunk she had a lot of stuff in her chest all that stuff changed God designed it to change y'all didn't know that when gravity started pulling on her all kind of stuff starts saying. Stuff you to sit up, and then you got to prop it up now. Cause gravity pulling on it. Come on, talk to me. The eyes that had tight skin up here, now they got bags on. Things change, but it doesn't matter how you change physically. I got love. It doesn't affect what's on the inside of you. I got she, she's still the apple of your eye. You still the apple of her eye. She's not looking for no one else. You're not looking for one no, no one else because you're gonna rejoice with the wife of your youth. You're gonna enjoy her because this is the way God has designed it. Every man have his own wife. Every woman have her own husband. Talk to me. According to 1 Corinthians 7, 1 and 2, not concerning the thing whatever you wrote unto me, it's good for a man not to touch a woman, but nevertheless to avoid fornication, sex out of wedlock, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. Y'all didn't know that was Bible? Y'all didn't know that the body is not for fornication? It's not for having sex out of wedlock, but it's for serving the Lord. So he can walk in you, so he can talk in you, he can be your God, you can be his sons and his daughter. Ain't no sense that you know messing around. You, you, you ought to be, you know, a man that's a whole monger, you, you know, he's just like a crap shoot. You'll never know when you're gonna roll snake eyes. You don't know 
She might be pretty on the outside and infected with all kind of disease. He might be handsome on the outside and infected with all kind of disease. I don't care if you don't ever like it. My God, but when you, when you got it right, you better try to keep it right. Ain't no sense to be trying to get some, some, some extracurricular activity on the outside of the marriage. I'm going, no, you ought to be a full-time husband. She ought to be a full-time wife. Bless him up and heal somebody. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's a deliverer. And he can deliver you if you want to be delivered. Now, now I don't just want, want, want to just talk about Jesus. I want to know him personally. I want to have a relationship with him personally. I, want, I don't want him just to love me, but I want to love him. But see, you know, there's no one here today that doesn't love Jesus. N not a one. In their, their way of thinking. I love him. But Jesus said, according to St. John 14, 15, you got to prove to me that you love me. He, now he said, if you love me, you will keep my command. In other words, you will do what my word said if you really love me. And so you can't just tell God that you love him. God said, I don't want you to love in word only, but in deed and in truth, I want you to prove to me that you love me. And then there are those, and when they look at uh, the Revelation, the second chapter, he's talking to the church of Ephesus. He said, I got somewhat against you. And the problem that he had with the church of Ephesus, that they lost their first love. In other words, they stopped loving God. They stopped being obedient to God. When you love God, you do whatever it's going to take to please him. My God, and when you love him, you're going to live in accordance to every word that proceeded out of his mouth. I don't care what the preacher said. Now, the preachers, most of, most of the preachers in this day and time are in Infested with sin. They drunkards, they liars, whoremongers. I don't care if y'all don't ever like it. And you, you, you trying to, you need want a pastor that if we need counselor that, you know, he's the man for the job. You can trust him because he's a holy man of God. You, he ain't going to be trying to hit on your wife. Now, you be trying to hit on the husband too now. They going both ways. I don't care if y'all don't ever like it. You got sissified preachers in the pulpit. Oh, they didn't find they didn't busted them down in Houston. I don't care if y'all don't like it. But then you know, your hand can't be, if he walking like that there, you move around. But that hand, it, it got to stand out there and be still. Okay, you can't be doing something like that there because it's time to. It got to be straight. And I'm telling the women, when, when you, you, you want a husband, you, you tell them, put your hand out there. For what? Because if it, it, it dipping, then I, you need to move around because I'm moving around. Because you want when that hand stand out there, it's just still. No, oh, no. That's good, that's good, that's good. Because people don't know. But we come to a place where God can teach us his word. I want a relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't want to just tell him that I love him. And last night I was in the club. Last night you were in the bed with somebody that wasn't your wife. You were in the bed with somebody that wasn't your husband. You don't go to church to hear that. Yes, you do. Come on, Mr. Milo, give me first Corinthians 6. Because people need to know what the Bible has to say about these things. Because, see, we're living in a sex crave society where people, that they think that it's okay. Because they don't care what you do in this day and time, it's okay. But somebody needs to go back and say, hey, we got to have some values in our life. We got to have some more standards in our life. Come on, read. First Corinthians chapter six, verse number nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Hold it right there. Y'all reading that? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? In other words, they can't go. They're not going to hell. Okay, come on. 
Be not deceived. Don't let nobody deceive you. Neither fornicators. Fornicators are those that are having sex out of wedlock. That's the, those that are not married. That's Bible. I didn't write that. Come on. Nor idolaters. No, a husband or a wife that won't be faithful to the mate. Come on. Nor adulterers. Nor effeminate. No. Effeminate. And, and sisters don't go eat. I don't care. President Obama says it's okay. And, 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 you know, if they want to do this, that, that, that they ought to be able to do it. Let me tell you something. President Obama and I, uh, nobody else had no business around there trying to tell folks time we're going to give them their right. They already had a right. They had a right to choose. That's why they were living the lifestyle that they were living because they had a right to choose. They chose to be like that. Ain't nobody talking about I was born like that. You wasn't born like that. Now, that was a choice that you made. Y'all don't believe that? Read it. See what it says, Ephemia? No unrighteous, I mean, no fornicators, no idolaters, no adulterers, no effeminate. Come on. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Come on. Nor thieves. All these folk that's stealing and the worst, I keep telling you that the worst thieves that are in the, in the world today are the, in, in, in the pulpit. The preachers, they steal the word. They won't tell you the truth. Come on. Nor covetous. Always desiring something that belongs to someone else. Nor drunkards, nor revilers. Let's, let's, let's stop right there. So you know, I drink, but I don't get sloppy drunk. No, no, no. The Surgeon General has concluded that after, after the consumption of one ounce of alcohol, you're no more so. Your speech may not be slurred. You might not be tripping over your feet or somebody else's feet that you saw over there. But you're still a drunk. Come on. Nor revilers. Always trying to get somebody back. Hey, let it alone. Somebody hurt you years ago, move on. You can't, don't, you can't go forward living in the past. Somebody wronged you way back when, somebody way back in high school. And I never forgot that. Hey, you need to get a life. You need to get a life. And, and, and move on because all of that stuff does, it, it put a stumbling block in your life. Come on. Nor extortioners. All these folks that scratching and matching and time of lucky dogs and Tyler Rolls and whatever kind of roll, you're going to hell. I can't pay for my gas because I'm going to give me two of those. Give me two of those. Yeah, give me two of those right there too. It's a number 47, number 2005. You know, you going to hell. That's again. And I don't care, but they say it's all right. I don't care. They say punkism is all right, but it's the word of God that says it's all right. Come on, Mr. Milo. Move on. Shall inherit the kingdom of God. He said you're not going to the heaven. You're not going. You won't inherit the kingdom of God. Now watch this here. Don't get mad at me. No, I'm trying to show you something. And such were some of you. See, the thing about it is we've been there. But God delivered us. We're not trying to belittle nobody. We're just letting you know where God then brought us from. We're trying to let people know where God then delivered us from. We're trying to let people know that the same Jesus that saved us, the same Jesus that saved you, the same God that brought me out, the same God will bring you out. Come on and talk to me up in here. That's right. Now, such were some of you. Somebody was a sister. They weren't born like that, right. but they were born again. And so when they, when they were born again, they, 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 they risk straight now. He didn't save them and they risk still like that. That when he, It's straight now. You got to do it like the Bible said. Don't you know God destroyed two cities? According to Genesis 19, that were given over to homosexuality. He burned them up with fire and brimstone. So you know God, is, you know, you know there's no Christians. Sisters, ain't no Christian punks, ain't no Christian lesbians, ain't no Christian cigarette suckers, ain't no, there are no Christian prostitutes. Oh yeah, they, they, got, they, they got everything now. God made my body beautiful, so that, that's why I'm showing. Now God, he, I believe he made Eve body beautiful, but he covered it up. Yes, he did. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Let me show you something. Hold on. 
That was a time when Jesus came into the coast of the gathering. And he met a man that was demonically possessed. That this man didn't live in the community like everyone else, but he lived out among the tombstone. You know, something was messed up the man with, with him that he didn't want to live in, in the community. He lived out in the, in, in the tombstone, in the graveyard among the tombstone. Now, let, let me tell you, why, not only that, he was out there, he was naked. He was a nudist. He didn't put on, run around out there on the cold slab in the graveyard naked. This Bible. Not only that, but he would take stones and cut his flesh. Yes. Howling all times of night. When the people tried to capture him with chains and fetters, he would break them. Because he was demonically possessed. Wow. But the Bible said when Jesus came into the coast of the oh, gathering, hey. this demoniac saw him. Had a he didn't run from Jesus, no, no, but he no. ran to no, Jesus. Jesus. And he fell on his knees. And my God, and worship him. My God, he fell down. And then the next time that they saw him, my God, they saw him clothed. He had clothes on. And in his right mind. See, when I was in the church of God and Christ, they were always say, you know, I pray that I be clothed and in my right mind. I, clothed, I pray that you be clothed and in your right mind. You know, that they, they, you know, saying things in ignorance and, you know, it was okay until I got the knowledge of it because the man was actually naked. Yeah, yeah. And so when they saw him, he literally had clothes on. Mm -hmm. And now, because he was not there cutting himself no more, now he's in his right mind. Amen. And so that's what God does. He, he, if, if you don't have clothes on, he'll make you put clothes on. Uh -huh. You know, women that walk around there with all these little days to do shorts on, when God saves you, he'll make you cover your tail up. If y'all don't ever like mm -hmm. what you say, Aretha, tell them to respect themselves. Wow. A woman that <laughs> respect themselves or cover themselves up, they don't walk around now all naked and nasty. Right. Okay, if y'all and, and you up there, you know you a twofold fool. Your old man, your eyes dance not on the stem because you're looking at that nasty self. <laughs> man, do you see that? Oh, wow. With your nasty self. Holy Ghost. I don't care if y'all don't ever like it. When God saves you, your eyes get saved. Let your eyes be single and your whole body be full of life. Because God got the power to save you to the utmost. And see, let me tell you something. Somebody needs to try Jesus. My God, because what God can do in your life, and you will never be the same again. My God, he can change you. And this is what God, we're looking at an army with young men, young men that love the Lord. Young men, young women that selling out to God and not selling out to sin. My God, sin will abuse you. It will misuse you. It will hold you out. It will have you looking old before your time. But you come to God and he'll beautify the meek with salvation. Come on and talk to me. When God God make you make a young man look young. Right. Wait, wait, that young man do look old. No, uh, some of them look old than I do. No, no, when you got all of that nicotine, mm -hmm. all that alcohol and drugs in your system, it makes you look old before your time. Women look like old hags. They just young girls. I don't care if you don't ever like it. But God will beautify the meek with salvation. God is a preserver. He'll keep you. When you start getting this junk out of your system, when you get this poison out of your system, God will beautify you. Glory to God. Amen. People be seeing you. They be trying to want to know what happened to you. What you been doing, man? We ain't been seeing you out there. Yeah. But man, you sure do look good. Yeah, girl, you sure look good to what you been doing. Man, serving the Lord. <laughs> serving the Lord. Pay off me. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you, you run up on one of these dogs, two-legged one. Oh, okay. Time I turn around, let me look at you. No, man, you ain't got to look at me. I'm serving the Lord. Because what happened in the past is buried. Yes. I don't do that no more. Mm -hmm. Then you hear say such were some of you? Yes. Now see, see, we used to do some of those things, but God saved us. We came in contact with
with Jesus and we became to know him as a savior. We became to know him as a deliverer and I'm just glad to be saved because I know what Jesus can do if you give him a chance. Now look at here. Such were some of you. Come on. But ye are washed. Now you're washed. But ye are sanctified. Now you're sanctified. Let me tell you, sanctified and not looking all whole out, whole out and ragged and nappy hair and all that. that. Sanctified means set apart to serve God. You're, you're, you're not set apart to look crazy. So the folks are saying, I, I would have, if I have to look like that, it, I said the same thing. I looked at some of these folks and the way they look with mismatched stockings on and all that. I said, I don't want to be saved. If that's what being saved is, I don't want to be saved. Y'all walking around there, everybody with the angel mama look. You know, the, you know they, they were doing what Tupac was doing before he, he put a rag on his head. Walking around with the angel mama look. And so, but, uh, you know, when God saves you, God makes you the head and not the tail. God knows how to, to set you apart from the world. You don't have to walk around with, with your dresses all split up and all this, all your tutu showing. You can't sit down. You can't stoop down because all, all your underwear showing. I don't care if you don't ever like it. But when God saved you, my God, then you have some respect about yourself. My God, so you want to dress right so I can look right. My God, because I'm not trying to please man. I'm trying to please God. My God, I'm not walking around with, with one of my wise beater t-shirts on. Because I ain't no wife beater. You can't mow the yard unless you got on a wife beater shirt. The chest is, you know, all sunk back to the back. Come on, brother, 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 brother. You ought to have on a whole bunch of shirts. Pizza <laughs> wife. <laughs> and walking around with the little shorts. So you know that they, 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 that that that's 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 messed up. And the little legs looking like a toothpick in a boot. It ain't oh. that. Ain't touching no rabbit around the waist. Come on, talk to me. Brother, that's messed up. Don't, don't give a brother the bad name. <laughs> Can I just keep it real? That I don't pull punches here. I just got to tell it like it is. Because if, you, if I lie to you, then I got to keep on lying to you. So I'm just going to tell you the truth. Come on, no smile on. But ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. When God get finished with you, it's just like you had never sinned. He'll make you over again. And that's what God has the power. And that's what I thank God, my God, that Jesus Christ, he was the word incarnate. My God, and the word has never lost his power. It still has the power to set free. Uh, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You can be delivered from your sin. Every whip, everything that's not like God, he can take it out. Listen. Nobody in the right mind said, listen, I want to go to hell. I want to go to hell. I don't care what you say, preacher. I want to go to hell. But let me tell you the testimony of a man that was in hell. <laughs> the testimony of two men. The Bible said that was a poor man. The lady at the rich man gate full of swords and begging for the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. And the Bible said that finally this beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. It also said that was a rich man. The rich man, he also died. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. He looks over and sees Lazarus, 
that beggar in Abraham's bosom. So he cried out, Father Abraham, could you send Lazarus that he may dip his finger, tip his finger in water and put it on the tip of my tongue because I'm tormented in this thing. So now he said, well, don't you remember in your lifetime you had good things? And Lazarus, evil things. But now Lazarus is confident and you are tormented. He said, besides, there's a great gulf fixed between us. There's a place, God put a divine line here so those over there can't come over here. And those over here can't come over there. So, but he said, Father Abraham, I got five brothers. Could you send Lazarus to warn them, least they come to this place to tell me? Hell is not a game. And a preacher can't put you in hell. The life that you live on this side is going to determine where you spend eternity. The Bible says upon it now we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ and we must all give an account of every deed done in our mortal body, whether it's good or whether it's evil. But I heard Daniel say, some going to rise to everlasting life, some going to rise to everlasting contempt, everlasting damnation. So somebody going to heaven and somebody going to hell. To go in the church doesn't, doesn't make you ready for hell. Only Presenting your body unto God as a living sacrifice. God, I want you to walk in me. I want you to talk in me. And see, well, if God is walking in you, if God is talking in you, my God, just like he's walking in me and talking in me, my God, he don't, call, he don't have me taking pills anymore. He don't have me smoking dope anymore. You know, when I, I wasn't like Bill Clinton. I keep telling you, when I, when I put that joint to my mouth, I made it look like Rudolph nose. It lit up. Bill Clinton, I, I didn't inhale. I inhale. I'm just going to tell you. Because it wasn't going to do me no good, you know, to be around there, have one, and wasn't going to inhale. So, but I'm just glad to be saved. I'm glad that God delivered me. Because see, folks, look at me now, and, and, and they don't know where I come from. They look at some of you. They don't know where you done come from. But God had brought it from a mighty long way. See, my testimony, just like David, he brought me out of a horrible pit. My God, I was wrapped up, tied up, and tangled up in sin. A life that was a mess. But I thank God that Jesus Christ had mercy on me. But he cried out, Father Abraham, send Lazarus. Go ahead and go back and warn my brothers. At least they come to this place to tell me. He said, no, we can't do that. He said, besides, they wouldn't even believe one come from the dead. He said, they got Moses and the prophets. If they don't believe them, if they don't hear them, they would not hear one come from the dead. And so the thing is, now God said, Moses is gone. The other prophets are gone. But Isaiah, not not not. The son of Amos, but the son of Isaiah, that's me. He's here. You hear him. You're here preaching unto you. He's going to declare unto you the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. Every time you look up, young folks are dying. They feel like they're invincible. They feel like they don't need Christ. They got parents that, 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 that won't tell them to, hey, you need to give your life to God. You got grandfather that won't tell the children, the grandson, that you need to give your life to God. Men telling their son, you need to be, you need to be a man. You need to sow your oats while you're young. When he wind up when his stuff in a sling, let me see what you want to say about that. When it's time to wind up, that he got an incurable disease. He said, by doing what you told him, go sow your oats while you're young. No, no, no. You learn him how to be a man. A real man, keep himself. A real man, a married man is faithful to his own wife. A real woman that's married is faithful to her own husband. Don't care if you don't ever like it. Man, I done been all up and down the East Coast, the Bahamas, the West Coast. But I still, when I go, I come back safe. I leave saved, I come back saved because I got my own stuff at home to work with. I got to let every man have his own wife. And I don't care how pretty, how beautiful some other woman look, I got my own stuff to work with. Come on and bless him, somebody. You know, I can go out there and do whatever I want to do. 
I'm almost old enough. But I choose to serve God. I choose to do those things that are pleasing and acceptable in this sight. I just want to serve him. Just for the record. I gave my life to God at 22 years old. And they told me, hey, you'll be back. Now I'm that, this many years old and I haven't been back yet. <laughs> and so when I come back, they, <laughs> they, they're not glad to see me. Because I'm just glad that God can keep me. And I want, I want you to know the God that I know. The God that's got the power to keep you. The, you know, let me tell you something. You know, say, that's why I don't like serving God is because you can't do this and you can't do that. Now, if you want to go to heaven. Now, if you want to go to heaven, you can do whatever you want to do. But, you know, heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. Heaven is a place for people that are, go, that are living holy, coming to be with a holy God. And holiness is a lifestyle that, that project the attributes of God. When people see us, they behold Christ in us, the hope of glory. Not going to church, not walking around with religious paraphernalia on, with, with the old sister old, and, and pastor's wife, with all of the sister boys dolled up up there, and then you got a cross or a dove sitting in the midst of it. No, 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 that's messed up. You got to cover the sisters up. Both of them, both of them. Looking like two grapefruits sitting up there. So you need to cover the sisters up. And so everybody ought to want to be covered up. They ought to want to dress appropriately. Come on, talk to me. Because it, it take a, a man, he got to be truly messed up. They got a wife, a so-called significant other, and she walking around there, all her stuff out. All her stuff out. And, and uh, then, then other folks looking at her. Then you, you, you get an answer. What you looking at? What you looking at? What, what, what you looking at, man? What you looking at? Don't be looking at my woman like that. Your woman, I will cover herself up. Because if it ain't for sale, are you giving away while you advertise? Preach it all the time, I'll preach it. <laughs> you ought to cover it up, cover it up. Oh, glory to God. You, you, can, you know, you all tell the, hey, where you going with that on? You ain't going out there looking like that. What you mean I ain't going out looking like what? Like that? Go in there and look in the mirror. You ain't going out there looking like that. You're going to cover yourself up. You're going to put some decent clothes on. Because see, if you don't start out like that, brother, you won't have that problem. You know, we, we, we play that game. Can I just teach a little bit? I'm going to be finished. You know, before we got married, we didn't care what they did. You know, it, it, everything go. But we just, we trying to, we just, we won't just hook you. We just want to hook you. So just as soon as we say I do and then the honeymoon is over, you go home and then we just going to live a regular life, you know, newlyweds. Then they actually go pull out that junk. Then you stand up, where you going with that on? Where you going with that on? Oh, I've been wearing this here. Yeah, but you ain't wearing it no more. You, you didn't say nothing while, but we wasn't married then. Now you got to cover your stuff up. That's mine, and I want it covered up. I don't care if y'all don't like They go in there and put No, that, that you, you got to put that in the trash too. We, we, that, that's, that's exposing too much of my stuff. That's my property, and I want it covered up. Come on, talk to me. And if he come out of there and ain't dressed right to holy, go pull them spandex off. <laughs> and he walking around now with those bikini drawers on the hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you got to get rid of the bikini drawers, brother. What are you doing? Trying to go with yourself? Who are you trying to impress with these bikini drawers on? Put some drawers on. I'm sorry. Put some underwear on. See, this, this is holiness. This is holiness. I ain't, I'm not trying to shout you. I'm trying to get you saved. 
And I want, you, I want you to understand, I can relate to you. I've been there. But God saved me. And anybody that's truly saved and delivered, they've been where you are also. That God had to bring them out. God had to deliver them also. Come on and talk to me. No, no. See, I, he, he embarrassed me. No, this is my life. God saved me and where God brought me from. And I'm just glad to be saved. And if you allow him into your life, you'll be glad to be saved. 